Continuing to keep you updated on the Pastor Robert Morris scandal, everything going on at Gateway Church. A new interview from Cindy Clemeshire with CBS Texas revealing some new information and also new allegations. This was not mentioned before in Cindy's original interview with the Wartburg Watch. What did she have to say? And also, what about an unlikely ally? Who was it? that helped Cindy realize the actual mistreatment that she was receiving at the hands of Robert Morris. You may be surprised by who that name is, but we're going to get into it here in just a second, along with a bunch of other things. Before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all, which you will find a link to in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a couple different ways you could do that. One, just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link is in the description. You guys want to get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform, well, when you join the Patreon, that's exactly what you're going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing, and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, I'm not going to do a review of everything. I have been covering this story ever since it first came out back in June. Uh, there's a lot you've missed. If you're new here, you can go back on the channel and check out all my previous updates. But I want to focus right now on this new information because Cindy Clemeshire gave another interview. This is with CBS Texas, and she talked about a a multitude of different things. Uh, One of those was new allegations that we had not previously heard of, which I will get to here in a little bit. But first, I want to start with this. The unlikely ally of who helped Cindy Clemeshire really understand and realize that what happened to her at the hands of Robert Morris was in fact inappropriate behavior slash mistreatment. Now understand this, Cindy did not come to this realization fully until the mid 2000s. In fact, she said in the interview that it was around 2005. Now that year might ring a bell to you and I'll tie that all in here in just a second, but let's, let's just go over some of the things that Cindy was going through prior to 2005. She talked about having a lot of counseling, a lot of therapy, obviously, with what she went through. And remember, you know, with Robert Morris, everything he did with her, all sorts of inappropriate behavior and mistreatment that went on from Christmas night, 1982, all the way through 1987. Now, Cindy, for a long time, did not believe that, well, you know, what Robert did to her was real you know, mistreatment. And I'm obviously using a different word for obvious reasons. You know, we got to be careful with what we say on this platform. And the reason that she didn't really fully see it that way was because he was nice. He wasn't mean. He didn't yell at her. He wasn't like, you know, stern in, in what he was telling her he wanted to do with her and what he wanted her to do with him. So she thought that because his presentation about it was not mean that Somehow it wasn't the full-on mistreatment that everybody was trying to tell her that it was. Well, it was back in 2005. Cindy Clemeshire talks about watching an an episode of Oprah Winfrey of all shows. And it was Oprah that got her to open up and realize that, in fact, yes, what she experienced was full-on mistreatment. It didn't matter that he was being nice about it, that he wasn't being mean about it. Because Oprah herself is somebody who says that she was also a victim of mistreatment growing up. You don't have, you don't have to like Oprah. You don't have to like her as a person. You don't have to like her, her, her politics. But she has been somebody who throughout her career has stood up for these victims like Cindy. Well, it doesn't always have to come from, you know, a a likely source. And again, Cindy had sat through lots of therapy and counseling over the years, but it didn't really fully click for her until she heard that from Oprah. Now, I mentioned 2005. This is important because remember, that was the same year 
that Cindy started emailing Robert Morris about what happened to her and wanting to get some sort of restitution. Remember, I talked about Tom Lane, who was, you know, gateway pastor at the time, who the email had gone to him, and, you know, he had tried to say that he didn't know Cindy's real age at the time. But Cindy said in this new interview with CBS Texas that it was right after watching that episode of Oprah is what inspired her to email Robert Morris and start that whole chain. Remember, that email correspondence went like six months. It went almost the majority. It went from like April of 2005 all the way through like the very early part of October of that same year. And of course, two years after that, in 2007, when Cindy got her lawyer, remember, she was asking for $50,000 to help with the counseling, to help with the therapy, but they responded by saying that they would only give her $25,000 and make her sign an NDA. She did not take that offer. But also remember in the email correspondence, remember Morris was basically asking her to name her amount. What will it take to you know get you to stay quiet? Now, Cindy joked and said $2 million, but that's not really what she was after. It wasn't about money for her. He was just basically coming at her saying, give me a number, give me a number. And then he hung up the phone after she said $2 million. She just wanted him to be held accountable. Remember, still to this day, he has not faced any consequences whatsoever for his actions. None. And I'm sorry, but for those of you that worship Robert Morris, the creep that he is, him resigning as pastor of Gateway, that is not in any way a punishment. That is not accountability. Okay? The guy is probably never going to get jail time for what he did. He's basically gotten off scot-free and he became a multi-millionaire for it. But you Robert Morris idol worshipers, you don't care about that. You gateway worshipers, you don't care about that. Oh, you don't like what I'm saying? Then don't watch me. There's hard truths to come out from this channel. Some like it, some don't. No one's forcing you to watch, okay? We don't put up with any sort of victim shaming or idol worship of man. We don't put up with that here. You can go listen to Joel Osteen for that sort of garbage. You want a nice positive, oh, I love everybody. I'm Joel Osteen. I just want to talk about happy things. I want to talk about sin. Get out of here. I don't want to hear that nonsense, okay? Let's also not forget, because people are like, why didn't Cindy take him to court? Don't forget, it was Robert Morris's own lawyer who blamed Cindy for the one who initiated this whole thing because it was Cindy that got into his bed after Robert Morris told her to come there. No, Morris wasn't blamed for that. It was Cindy who was victim-shamed. So she said in the interview, I didn't want to have to go to court and be embarrassed, you know, by the lawyer. It was basically blaming me for the whole thing. So I didn't go through with it. But now you, you, you Morris worshipers out there, you love this guy, right? You probably just can't wait to see him step back into a pulpit. You really all should be ashamed of yourself because your enablers is what you are. And again, you don't like what I'm saying. You don't have to watch. And I certainly don't want to hear from you in the comment section either. Uh, you ain't going to be, we're not going to put up with you. You'll be blocked. So don't even, don't even try. But let me get to this other piece here. And look, thank, thank, thankfully Oprah helped open up Cindy's eyes to what was going on. Again, you don't have to like her personally. It's not always someone you think uh, that's going to, you know, help open up your eyes to something. But here was another thing that helped Cindy. This was, this was, this is part of the new allegations that we had not heard. It, now, it did not involve Robert Morris. However, what it, did, what it did involve was Cindy's own son. The first time, we know she's a mother, we know she's a grandmother. This is the first time we've heard her talk about one of her kids. She said in this interview that her own son was being basically stalked by a, another student's father who was sending inappropriate messages to her son, text messages, asking for inappropriate photos. He was basically prepping her son, if you know what I mean, creep. And when Cindy found out about it, because what had happened to her, she was able to realize what was, you know, in the process of happening to her own son, and she put a stop to it because of what she went through already, because of what she heard from that Oprah show about what happened to her because what Robert Morris did to Cindy Clemishier, this other student's father was doing it to her own son. And she said, "Uh -uh, not on my watch. So you see how all these things have come together, right? We're getting more and more information about this entire case. And still to this day, 
No consequences for Robert Morris. Really, no consequences for Gateway Church. I don't want to, I don't even care. They say, oh, we're doing an independent investigation through Haynes and Boone. You're not doing nothing. It's a crisis management firm that specializes in mitigating financial and reputational loss of major organizations like Gateway. I mean, you can go back and watch my other videos about all the other lawsuits that came out through Gateway of pastors, other pastors on staff that got caught up in inappropriate behavior, cover-ups, all of it. Yeah. I have a right to be angry about this. And anybody who is a true Christian should feel the same way. But I'll leave it there. Again, I appreciate those of you who stick around and watch these. You, you feel me on this. You get it. I know a lot of people don't. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm done. Like, it, it just drains me, to be perfectly honest. It drains me. Uh, and sometimes it is very hard to come on here um, and do these videos. Sometimes I just think about not doing it anymore because it's just, it takes a lot out of me and it's just, uh, you know, you deal with a lot of really, really um, dumb people. And I like to use another word, but I won't. But you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I will have more information for you on this over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. It is free to join the Patreon. When you sign up for free, you can get access to things like the links that I provide up there. Uh, but if you do want the full early access to the videos before they go on the main YT channel, then you can become a paid member for as little as five bucks a month. Don't forget as well, you can hit the super thanks button if you would like to contribute to the ministry that way as well. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of these wolves that occupy the pulpits. We always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then... You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. Be soon.